In this video, I'm going to take you through the basic reusable methods and techniques to begin working with simulation nodes in Blender. And to do this, we're going to make some particle trails for a moving object. We're going to look at adding force node groups that we can reuse to add randomness and gravity to the system. We're going to look at how we add initial velocity, um, how we add particle age to this so we can scale based on that and all sorts of other things. And now the first thing what I want to do is add in a sphere that is going to be the emitter of the particles. So I'm going to go into the Shift A menu, add in an icosphere, and then I just want to keyframe this. Uh, I'll go into front view, keyframe it somewhere down here at the start, then go say 10 frames later, keyframe it to move upwards. Then in the timeline, I'm going to select these keys, set them to linear, do some linear extrapolation. And now we have this. I'll set the frame range to be something like 40 frames. Slow it down a little bit by dragging the keys out. And now I'm going to start to look at how we're going to add our particles to this. So the traditional way would be to add the particles to this mesh using a particle system. But we're going to try and do this with simulation nodes. So the way that this works is that we can't actually add the particles to the sphere itself because it will everything will be relative to that sphere's origin. So we actually need to set a new object that stays static and then all the motion will be relative to that. So I'm just going to add in a plane, rename this to trails, and I'll call the icosphere emitter. Now I'm going to open up a geometry nodes editor. And I'm going to add a geonode script to this called trails. Now I don't care about the original plane, so I'm going to delete the input and I'm going to drag in the emitter. Now if I view this and set this to relative, it perfectly lines up with our sphere. So now if I start by distributing some points on this, because that's what we're going to use to you know, be the particles for our trail, you can see that the points stick to the sphere. Now we don't want them to stick to the sphere, we want it to move based on uh, the sphere's inertia basically. So to start this process we're going to add a simulation zone and you can see what this immediately does is um, makes the points stay put where they are. Now if I want to say generate points every single frame I'll need to join this inside the simulation zone because everything that happens in this purple zone will happen once per frame. So I'm going to add in a join geometry and I'm just going to drag the same distribution into the join. And I'll just reroute this around here. And now you'll see what happens is we generate points every single frame. They don't move or do anything, but we haven't added anything, so we wouldn't expect that yet. Uh, but if I go into front view and view these, you see it's the exact same random distribution every single frame, which we don't want. We want to introduce a little bit more randomness. So in the seed input for the distribute points on faces, I'm actually going to just drag out and type in frame. And that way, every single frame, there'll be a new distribution of points. So that starts to make things look a little bit more random. Now, in terms of how we're going to add forces to these particles, we're going to essentially only have one actual node that plugs into the, affects the geometry directly. And that's going to be the set position node. Now, we could plug something into the offset. So you see, if I plug in a negative value, all the points will move down by this amount every single frame. But the way I like to work in simulation nodes and node, a much more powerful way to work is to actually use the position node, plug that into the position, you'll see nothing happens now. We're just maintaining their current position. And now if I add in a vector map in between here, set to add, this sort of acts as my velocity. So it does the same thing as using the offset, but the reason I like to do it this way is just for the sake of notation really. And then instead of just inputting anything here, I want to input an attribute that I'm going to create in a second called velocity. And now we can affect the velocity attribute in any way before this set position node and it will all update once at the end. So it's quite a clean and efficient way of working rather than having multiple set position nodes for every single force. So I'm actually just going to group this and I'm just going to call this update position. And this way I can reuse this node group in a different file if I want to, and I always know to put it at the end. Now what I want to do is give the particles some velocity. So let's give them an initial velocity before they enter the group. So I'm going to store a named attribute 
And this way, what we're doing is essentially creating an attribute on the new particles that spawn every frame. And we're going to call that attribute velocity and set it to be a vector. And this is stored on each individual point. And each individual point can also hold a different value. That's how sort of fields work in GeoNodes. So right now, if I set this to some positive value, you can see the points spawn, they have a positive value. But what if we want this value to say change over time? Well, then we need to not give it an initial velocity and actually give it some sort of velocity in the system. So to do that, I'm gonna use a store named attribute in here. And let's call this velocity and set this to vector. And what I'm also gonna do now is make a named attribute node set to vector as velocity as well. And then I'm gonna add a vector math add node. And this way we can now add a force to our velocity. So I can layer this up with a force of negative one in the Z. And what this essentially will do is accelerate the particles down every frame because right now what we're doing is not just setting a constant velocity we're actually adding to that velocity every single frame so this acts as an acceleration um, and this this little setup here is incredibly useful so what i'm going to do is group this and just call this add force and then if i drag this uh, add value to the input i'll set it to zero this is now our force so I can make the force of gravity, for example, and I could layer up another force on top of this, maybe a noise. I'll plug in the color, that'll be three dimensional. And you can see, you know, we get this kind of crazy, crazy stuff happening. And this is just examples of what you might do. But really what we want to do is give our particles some initial random velocity. So to do that, I'm just going to plug this noise texture in at the beginning. And you can see this kind of works. We get this sort of random spray effect. But um, everything seems to be moving directly down and sort of up to the right a little bit. And you can see if we go into 3D view, they, they clearly go into the sort of positive direction. And that's just because these noise values are generated from 0 to 1. And we want them to be generated from at minus 0.5 to 0.5 to just sort of normalize that range so that some can go negative, some can go positive. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is use a vector math node and subtract 0.5 from every dimension at once. So now our values will go from minus 0.5 to 0.5 in all three dimensions. Now, if I play this through, you should see the particles behave in a much more realistic way. They fall behind the sphere. And they're also layered up with the effect of gravity. Another nice thing you can do when working this way is before you update positions is to actually apply some dampening to your velocity. And what dampening is, is basically a reduction towards zero. Um, it's artificial. The energy is sort of getting destroyed, which can't happen in a real system, but it can sometimes be desirable. So what I'm going to do is use a vector math node set to scale. And what we're going to do is scale the velocity down by some amount every single frame. So to do this, I'm going to store named attribute again, set to vector. I'm going to store the velocity. And you can see everything will stop moving at the minute now because we're overwriting the velocity every single frame to zero. So I need to plug the velocity back in. I'm just going to copy this over. And I'm going to scale it by 0.9 every single frame. And what you should start to see is if I reduce this even further to say 0.5, these things start to slow down and generally a bit less chaos in the system. So if I uh, disable the force of gravity for a moment and I increase this to 0.9 again, you can see what happens is we start off with some chaotic motion and they eventually settle down. So it sort of imitates some resistances acting on this. So this can be pretty nice, but I'm not sure we're going to need that much of it because things fall out of frame quite well. But I'll leave it in there. And I can group this up as well and just call this dampen velocity. And I'll plug in this scale factor as our dampening amount. 
So with these three node groups, you can pretty much make anything in simulation nodes using basic, you know, basic forces and velocity updates. Obviously, we're not taking into account collisions or anything more complex here, but you can see how you could start to build up these node groups for your own systems. Now, what I want to do is scale these particles down the uh, older they are, basically. So the more time that they've been in the scene for, the smaller they should get. Uh, up to a maximum, down to a maximum of zero. But to do this, I'm actually not going to try and affect the scale in the node group. It's actually much simpler to just uh, first instance on these points. And what this does is basically just allow you to put your particles onto the points, so your actual mesh particles. So I'm going to make a collection of particles. Call that here. And we'll take a little break from the GeoNode stuff while I just make a little icosphere as a little particle. And I'm just going to go into the shader editor and give it a basic material. In rendered view, I'll delete this principle to give it an emission. Turn on bloom in my render settings as well. Make this quite bright. And then for the color, I'll make it be random. Uh, I, I won't use particle info because remember, we're not actually using the official particle system. I have to use object info. And then I'll plug this through a color ramp. And I'll set some nice colors that I like, maybe a blue to a greeny yellow. And now if I duplicate these up, you see we get some nice random colors along that gradient. Now what I want to do next is bring in, I actually have a little drawing. It's pretty terrible, but it's just this little spark. I'm going to use this as one of my particles too. And this is nice because it has some direction to it, so we can do some nice cool stuff with rotation. So I'll reset the origin on that quickly, and then I'll just bump up the emission on this. And for the emission color, I'll again use random to my ramp, set to, you know, blue and turquoise. Now back in geometry nodes on the trail, I'm going to drag in this collection, separate children, plug it to instance, and pick children. Now you can see there's a bit of a problem. Our spark is not oriented correctly. Rotate this by 90 degrees. Scale it down a bit relative to the sphere. Or maybe a bit up. And then I'm going to randomize the scale of this. So just plug in a random value into the scale. I'm going to use a float value. And zero to one works fine. So now how do we uh, change the scale over time? Well, we're going to want to multiply it because this is what's going to allow us to get it basically scaled down to zero. Uh, but what do we multiply it by? We want to multiply it by the particle age, and we don't have an attribute for that yet, so we're going to need to make one, because we're doing all this from scratch. So I'm going to, at the very end of um, this whole tree, you could do this in the update position node group, actually. Um, and yeah, let's do that. I'm going to store a named attribute. I'm going to make this an integer because it's going to be a number of frames, which can never be fractional. And I'm going to call this age. And age will be whatever age was previously add one. So every frame, this just increases by a value of one. And we need to initialize age at the start here. So when they are initially generated, we need to set this to a value of zero. And then every after one frame, they'll have an age of one, two, two, etc. So now, if I bring in a named attribute after the um, simulation zone, I can plug in age. And if I just plug this into the multiply, you can see that as they get older, they get bigger. And this is great, it means our attribute's working. We just need to remap the values. So, to do this, I'm going to use a map range. And basically here we get to choose how long, how old do the particles have to be before they start to scale down. I'm going to choose 30 frames. And you can see right now we get the inverse effect. They scale up after 30, 30 frames. So I'm going to set the minimum to 1 and the max to 0. And 30 might be too long. Let's try 20. 24. So one second. And I think I might decrease the gravity force too. That looks a bit more magical. Nice. 
Now we can also use age to drive some rotation and things like that. So they could rotate a lot when they spawn and slowly slow down. So I'm going to grab the age attribute again. Well, first actually I'm going to plug in a scene time and I'm going to take seconds and I'm going to multiply it by some value. And I want to drive this into the Y rotation. You see that sort of spins the sparks here. I don't really want to do any um, this kind of rotation I don't think will look very nice on the sparks because they're quite flat. So I'm going to use a combine XYZ node, plug this into the Y, plug that into the rotation, and now you'll see as these spawn they just kind of spin. And they all spin uh, irrespective of how old they are, which is fine, you might like that look, but I kind of want them to slow down as they go. So after we've uh, done this speed, I'm going to add in another multiply node set to 1, and I'm going to again plug in age, but this will mean that they get faster as they get older, because again, the value keeps increasing, so we need to remap it. I'm going to grab this, uh, I'll leave this at 24, and actually we should be able to leave this node exactly as it is, and we might want to change this range a little bit, but this will essentially slow them down to 0 as they get older. Maybe they can only spin for 10 frames. But yeah, that's pretty much it for basic particle trails. I hope this was um, useful to you, and it also shows how you don't have to do everything inside of this simulation zone. You can also do some clever stuff with attributes passed out of it in the instance on points node. So yeah, that's pretty much it.